Welcome creative adventurers. I'm Debbie Cohn with D. Cohn Designs. Thank you for stopping by. Have you received a jelly roll recently as a gift? Or maybe you've got several in your stash and you're just not sure what to do with them. Looking for something quick and easy? I've got a video for you today. I'll be making the jelly roll race quilt, but with a modern fresh twist. It's quick and easy. It'd be great for any last minute gift or for something for your own home decor. This checkerboard jelly roll race quilt measures approximately 66 and a half by 74 inches. The pattern is available at dconedesigns.com over at my website. Please stay tuned to the end for a giveaway where you can enter to win one of five PDF copies of the pattern for free. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please tell a friend and head on over to my blog at dconedesigns.com. For today's project, I'll be using the Love Lily Collection by April Rosenthal for Moda Fabrics. Let me rotate it so you can see the cute and fresh fabrics that I'll be using. If you want to purchase this, go ahead on over to my affiliate link in the video description or go to my blog post for this and the link will be there to Green Fairy Quilts. All right, what I have here are the things you'll need for this checkerboard jelly roll race quilt. Um, you'll have the usual suspects, of course, your uh, ruler, you'll have your rotary cutter, you'll have your fabrics, and you'll need a pair of uh, scissors or shears. Some optional items would be this laundry basket, which I'll go into more later, more detail later. Um, a pair of snips would be handy, a clip or some clips would be helpful, and a lint roller would be nice as well. In addition, of course, you'll need your iron and your sewing machine. All right, as far as fabrics go, I'm going to use this jelly roll. It is Love Lily by April Rosenthal for Moda Fabrics. I'll open it in a moment and show you the really cute fabrics. And then I have some yardage from the same collection for Fabric A, which will be your binding, and for the checkerboard, Fabric B for the checkerboard, and Fabric C is for the border. As you unwrap your jelly roll, you may want to use your lint roller to pick up some of the excess little bits. You may also want to run it over your work area as well and picked up a, a fair amount more. And then set it aside. Let's open the jelly roll. There's a couple of things to keep in mind when you choose a jelly roll for a jelly roll race quilt. First, you're gonna to wanna to look at your strips. So I'm gonna unfold them. Here I've unrolled my jelly roll and I suggest that you look at the colors because you may wanna pull a couple of strips if they are too light. You want to have plenty of contrast with your checkerboard and your border. So in my case, I, I love how the mediums and the darks are, that's great. But I'm looking right in here and a couple of these look too light. So I'm gonna pull this strip out because it's too light. It does not add anything to the quilt. I'll put that aside for a different project. And then I think I'm going to pull this one as well. The pattern is so small it reads almost a solid. I'm gonna pull that one. So what I'm going to do, I wanna make sure I have enough strips. So I'm gonna take this green uh, fabric and in the pattern there is enough yardage to do this. I'm going to cut two extra strips of my green yardage. That, that way I'll have enough strips to make up the difference for the strips that I took out. You could of course replace the strips with any solid or any other coordinating fabric. You could even use your uh, border fabric if you wanted like I have here. It's totally up to you. But you'll want to make sure you have the full complement of Jelly Roll strips. So the idea behind the Jelly Roll race quilt is that there's no pinning needed and no measuring. What we'll be doing is taking long strips and sewing them together. The first part of this is to sew the strips end to end, every single strip into one really long strip. And here's where that this comes in handy. This is a laundry basket. Right there you can see a laundry basket. I suggest that you put the laundry basket on the floor by your feet where you can feed the long strips. As you sew them, they can go into the basket rather than just on the floor. That's in case your uh, floor is a bit uh, untidy like mine. Keeps your strips in one contained area. The first thing you'll do is take your strips and begin to sew them end to end. Now you can see them; they come from the manufacturer kind of in a color order 
like this. You don't have to mix them up. You can, but in the end, it really won't matter much. It, it's not possible to control the outcome of exactly where the placement is for each of the colors and the strips. The only thing I will note is the strips at the very beginning will be what will show at the top and the bottom of your quilt. So you might want to keep that in mind if you're looking for a specific strip at the top or the bottom. Before we begin sewing, I'm going to cut the selvages off of my strips. You don't have to, but I feel it will be tidier and it will ensure an even shrinkage of your fabric. All right, as you can see here, I've stacked up my strips. I've lined them up with my mat so that they're reasonably straight, and then I'm going to use my I'm going to use my ruler to cut the selvages off all at once. Be sure you have a fresh blade. I just changed mine you might be more comfortable putting them in fewer strips per stack. Whatever works best for you is what you should do, what you're comfortable with. Okay, here we are at the machine. You have your strips all stacked up. You want the ends of them facing toward you so that you can pick them up easily. You're gonna take the first strip and the second strip and so a quarter inch seam across the two strips like that. Then all you need to do is move one out of the way, take the next one, sew the next one, take the right side of that strip, move those out of the way, take the next strip, right sides together. And you keep going until you've sewn all the strips end to end. So I'm gonna do that and I'll come right back to the machine when I've got that much done. All right, so I've come to um, all the way back to the beginning to my first strip. So you have a choice at this point. You can, if you want, go back and iron the entire strip, all 1800 inches, and iron out the fold and the seam of every single one of these. I am not going to do that right now. I'm going to wait and do that when I'm a little bit farther into sewing the quilt together. So the next step is to take the one end right here, and then you're gonna fish around in your laundry basket until you find the other end with the clip, or clips in my case, like that, and then you're going to sew them together, right sides together. Now don't worry about them getting twisted. You'll be able to untwist them at the very end. You'll snip and uh, untwist them. First, you're going to join the first strip and the last strip right sides together, and then you're going to stitch all the way down the entire strip. So you will effectively be cutting your 1800 inch strip in half by joining the two strips together. So you'll have one, one long strip of two smaller strips sewn together along the long edge. So let's do that. Here I am at the machine. I have my strips all in a big laundry basket under my sewing table, and I'm going to begin sewing the two strips right sides together. I'm gonna to feed it through and feed it through, and then I'll end up with a big pile of two strips sewn together on my sewing table. So One tip I'd like to give you is when you are sewing, don't tug or pull on the pieces, on these. You just want to gently make sure they're lined up and then guide them gently. Don't tug or pull because you will warp or stretch the seams. For me, I'm using seam tape, diagonal seam tape here. You could use a sewing ledge made out of masking tape. That would work as well. Or if you're more comfortable, you can certainly just use the markings on your machine. For me, I find diagonal seam tape to work well. If you discover that your seams are matching between the two strips, then you made a minor error that you can fix. Just rip out the seam and then go back and cut off 18 inches to cut off the very first strip. So you can see I'm almost to the end of stitching the first set of strips together and it's all twisted up. That's okay. All you're going to do is stretch it out a little bit, find the half point, find it where it stops, and then just snip along in there. You can snip along a seam if you want, or um, offset. I'm gonna snip along the seam. 
You can use rotary cutters certainly, but I'm just going to take a pair of shears. And then since I cut along the seam, I'm going to snip that one little bit where the I'm going to snip that one little bit where the seam is. Like that. And then I'm going to unravel everything and finish sewing down to the end of the strip. So almost all the way to the end. And then I'll come back to you. Okay, you can see we've gotten to the end and there's just a little bit where they don't quite match up. I'm going to trim that I'm off. I'm going to do the same thing as we did before. Here you can see my pile of strips. It's one long piece right here. If you put a clip at the beginning, it'll be easy to find. You can even put a clip at the end as well so you can match them up easily. At this point, you can press um, the seam all the way down or you can wait and press it a little later. I'm going to wait and do one more round before I press the seams open. I think it'll be faster than doing it after each round. So at this point we're going to find the other end and we're going to match the, the beginning with the end and we'll be sewing two parts together. Two strips to two strips. Here you can see I found the beginning and the end and I'm going to do the same thing as we did before. We're going to open them up, put them right sides together. I'm going to clip the one end. It'll make it easier to find the end when I get down to the other side. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch again with a quarter inch seam. So you can see here toward the end of round two where I've sewed two strips to two strips that I only have a small tangle right here. Uh, just a small bit of flipping, so I'm going to gently smooth that out before I stitch the last bit down, and then I'm going to snip them approximately where it would be. It doesn't have to be exact, but I'll be fairly close. So about right in here. And then I'm going to finish stitching that last little bit. Then we'll be ready for round three. Okay, and there you have it. Right in here, you can see it's four rows. I'm going to go ahead and press the seams, the long seams, as well as the horizontal seams, the vertical and horizontal seams at this point because I think it'll be easier to handle, and then I will iron them again at least one more time before we finish this part of the quilt. Now you can see I've sewn two sets of four together, four here and four here. I'm going to join them just like I did before, right sides together, and then I'm going to sew along the seam all the way. As you can see here, I'm at the end of round three where I've sewn four together with four together for a total of eight across, and it worked out really well. I was careful, and I don't have to untwist anything. I just sew off the end, and then I'm going to slice it right at the fold there. And then I'll take a um, shears or a rotary cutter, and I'll just slice it right there. Then we'll begin round four, where we add the sets of eight plus eight together. We have round four, so it's eight across, plus eight across. So we're going to join them just like before, right sides together, quarter inch seam. You'll notice that the rounds are going faster and faster. Obviously that's because the length of the strip is getting shorter and shorter. We have this round and we have one more and we'll be done. You'll notice that I didn't iron after the last round. I'm going to wait and iron the last three seams uh, once the whole top is put together. So this is the end of round four where I have eight plus eight. I've come to the end, there was no twist, so I'm going to go ahead and use my rotary cutter and my ruler and then slice the end. Then I'll begin round five, the very last round, where I'll sew the sections of 16 and 16 together and I'll be done with this part of the quilt. To make sure it's even, I line up my ruler along my seams. So there's a seam here and a seam there, just making sure it's even when I trim. And there we are, that's 16 across, and we're ready to sew the last round. All I'm going to do is fold it in half again, match the top and the bottom, and then sew the seam one more time.
One thing you'll want to do again is to put the weight of the quilt in your lap. Don't let it hang off the edge of the table because that will pull on the seams and you don't want that. You want it to, you don't want the seams to stretch. This last round is the best of all because it goes very fast. So here's the jelly roll strip section of the quilt. I've sewn all the strips together. I put it up on my temporary design wall and I'm panning down slowly so you can see it. Here are fabrics A and B for the checkerboard sections. The fabric A is the print, fabric B is the solid. I'm going to begin by slicing off the selvages and then cutting both of them into equal strips. In this case, it's two and a quarter inches wide so that when we put the squares together, you will not actually have to match the seams on the jelly roll section. Instead, they'll be offset just a little bit and it'll be quick and easy to sew. Let's cut those strips. Here I've laid out my fabric A and since I have a yard of it, I fold it in half so that my selvages are at the top or so that my selvages are at the bottom of my mat. And then I'm just going to cut a straight edge before I begin cutting into strips. I've cut a straight edge on my print fabric. Now I'm going to cut the strips for the checkerboard. I'll go ahead and cut the floral and then I'll do the same for the solid, the white solid. I've used a hand weight at the top of my ruler to help make sure that my ruler doesn't move. Here I've cut the strips for my checkerboard. I've cut off the selvage ends and I'm going to give them a quick press, then I'll sew them right sides together. I'm going to sew them end to end. So I'll take the green ones, in this case the floral print, put them right sides together and join them end to end. And then I'll do the same for the solid white. Join the strips end to end just with a regular straight quarter inch seam. Here you can see I've cut my strips for the checkerboard set. I've ironed the strips and I've also cut the selvages off the ends. Next I'm going to sew them end to end to make a long strip of each of the floral and of the solid. Then after that I'm going to make a strip set. To do that we will be pinning them together along the long edge and joining them together, much like we did with the jelly roll race. So you take one like this, right sides together, and then you're going to pin and sew. You're going to pin and sew down the entire length with a quarter inch seam all the way down the strip, joining the solid and the floral together. Then we're going to cut it up into the smaller segments to make our checkerboard. It's almost magic. Let's get sewing. Okay, I'm going to sew the two strips together, quarter inch seam down one side. And there we have it. Next, we're going to press this. I'm going to press the seam to the darker fabric and then we'll begin to cut it into our smaller checkerboard sections. And here I've sewn the strips together for the checkerboards and I've pressed the seams so that they are toward the darker fabric. I've also um, doubled them up or stacked them so that I can cut more quickly. What I'm going to do since the strips are two and a quarter inches wide is I'm going to use my two and a half inch ruler and then just slide it over so that it's just short one quarter inch Lay it down, making sure the lines are lined up right on the edge, and then slice. I'm going to continue to do that all the way down the strip till I get to the end. Now that we've cut our long strips into our pieces, we're going to begin to arrange the checkerboard. So what you can do is, let me do it this way, and you're, gonna, you're just going to alternate right sides up like that, and then sew them in four patches. That's the easiest way to do it. Just to do that, we'll just flip it over, and then we're going to nest the seams. You can see that the seams are going in the opposite direction. Let me move that over so you can see it. So we'll be able to snug them up to each other nice and tight. They kind of lock into place like that, and you can pin if you like, which is what I'll do, and then you're going to stitch you're going to stitch the quarter inch seam down here to make the four patch. Continue to sew your four patches together till you've sewn all of your blocks into four patches. 
You can see here at the machine that I have several of my four patches all pinned and ready to go. I suggest that you pin them all first and then chain piece as you go. It'll make everything quicker and easier because you're doing it assembly line style. So let's do this. Now that I've sewn my four patches together, I'm going to press the seams open. So I flip it over to the other side and I might give it just a little bit of encouragement with my nails to start it. Then take the tip of my iron and press the seam open. The reason for that is it will reduce the bulk of the seams and help our block to lay flatter. Once you've pressed all the seams of your four patches open, you can, if you'd like, go ahead and trim them up. One way I, you can do that is to use a ruler. In this case, I have a four and a half inch ruler. So what I would do is line up my middle line with the horizontal seam and line up my two inch vertical line with my vertical seam there, like this, and then trim, and then rotate and trim the other two sides. As you can see, it's a little bit difficult to see and a little bit difficult to do. I do have another way to do this where we can trim most of the four patches at once, which I'll show you in just a few moments. So you can skip this step and instead do the step where we trim them with a longer ruler. If you decide to use the square ruler, you do it like this. You line it up horizontally and vertically and then carefully trim, rotate, line it back up again with your centers, trim again, this one doesn't need a lot, trim again, that one needs a little, and then one more, And the last one. There we go. Now we're ready to begin sewing our four patches together. The easiest way I've found to quickly nest the seams is to look at the seams on the back. So if you have the open seam here and the open seam here, if you lay them both horizontally and then put your block right sides together, you'll see that your seams will nest because in an earlier step you pressed toward the dark side there and the dark side on that one. So when you put them together, the seams will nest and you just give it a quick pin and you're ready to sew a quarter inch seam right sides together down the side. After you've sewn one four patch with a second four patch, then you'll begin to add those sets together to make one long checkerboard strip. After you've sewn one four patch to a second four patch, then you have another set of two four patches, then you're going to stitch those together with a quarter inch seam uh, down one side and then continue to sew the sets together till you have one long checkerboard, which will look like this. Then we will go ahead and press the seams open um, at each of these junctures, and then we will trim the entire strip. So here's another way to trim up your strips. If you don't want to square up your four patches one patch at a time, a quicker way that is maybe a little bit less accurate, but it's definitely more expeditious is to do it this way. So what I have here is a two and a half inch ruler laid on my long strip of four patches. What I've done is I've put the two inch line right on down the center of my four patch strip because I know that the final width of it will be four inches and half is two. So I line it up down the center seam like that. And then I'm going to just trim the excess. Then I will do the same thing for the other side. Like that. I'll just come over and I'll do the same thing. I'll turn it around because I happen to be right-handed. Like this. I'll put it on the two inch line. There we go. And then trim any little bits. Like that. It's fast and easy. The next thing is to cut the quilt into the three sections and then insert our strips. Before we cut the quilt into the sections, I just pinned up the checkerboard so that you can see the general idea of what we're going for here. 
you will have a few extra pieces at the very end of your checkerboard strips go ahead and save those just in case you need them if not you can always use them in a pillow or on the back to cut the quilt into the three sections, you will need to lay your quilt face down on your mat and on a protected surface. Then measure in from the edge, the side edge of your quilt, 13 inches, and mark it all the way down the length of the quilt. Then you will cut along this pencil line from top to bottom on the quilt using your rotary cutter and your ruler. You will do the same thing again on the other side, measuring in from the other side 13 inches, mark it all the way down, and then cut with your ruler, then cut with your rotary cutter. That will cut the quilt into three sections. As you can see here, I have pinned my checkerboard strip to the one of the shorter sections of the Jelly Roll Race Quilt. I really recommend that you pin fairly frequently along the strip. That will minimize stretching and distortion of your checkerboard section while you sew it and handle it. I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way down, right sides together, quarter inch seam down the entire length, joining the checkerboard section to the jelly roll section. I'll repeat with the other section and then I'll join both combined sections to the main part of the quilt. Here you can see I've pinned the checkerboard section with the jelly roll strip to the main section of the quilt. What I did to do that was I matched it across the checkerboard. You notice of course I'm not trying to match the checkerboard seams with the jelly roll strip seams, but just matching across the strip like this. It doesn't have to be 100% exact, but pretty close will do. I just laid it on my ironing board, laid them across, made sure they were straight, and then pinned. You can see that I'm pinning every checkerboard or every other checkerboard. That way it won't distort or stretch as we sew it because the quilt is getting heavier and heavier. So let's go ahead and sew the two sections to the main section of the quilt and then we'll be ready to square it up and put on our borders. So here's the quilt top with the checkerboard inserts. I've pinned it up on my homemade design wall just just some batting pinned up on a rod on top of my kitchen cupboards. I wanted you to see it before we add the borders. Here I have my floral border fabric. I've trimmed the selvages off the top and the bottom and now I'm going to make sure I have a clean straight edge in order to cut my borders. So let's do that now. I've got a weight on the end of my ruler to help hold it steady. I apply pressure on the ruler and I slice smoothly and cleanly all the way down like that. Now, now I can measure and cut my border sections. I move my ruler over, aligning it to the correct dimensions on my mat, put my weight back down again, double checking, always measure twice, cut once, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut the border sections. In this case, I've chosen for my border to be four and a half inches. You could choose whatever width you want. I chose mine to be four and a half because it's approximately the dimension of the checkerboard sections. So in my mind, visually, that balances it out. Wide checkerboard sections and wide borders to go with it. There's one section, I'll cut the rest, and then we'll begin attaching them. As you can see, I've cut the strips for my borders. I'll need about three strips for the top and the bottom and a three strips total for the both sides. I have an extra strip here because I will need to piece it just a little bit on the borders. I don't mind piecing my borders. That's not a problem for me. There are a few quilters I know that don't care for pieced borders at all and they will buy an extensive amount of extra fabric so that they have single long strips for each of the top, bottom, and both sides so there are no seams at all. But the seams don't bother me, so I just try to use my long strips first and then the little pieces I put toward the bottom of the strip when I sew it onto the quilt. So let's go ahead and pin and sew. We'll start with the side strips first. It's kind of like a doorway, the way that I think of it is. We're going to put the doorway sides on first and then the top and the bottom are the top and then the carpeting or the flooring around the door. So let's sew on our side borders. Here what I'm doing is just piecing my border strips together. I've got two strips right sides together 
sewing with a quarter inch seam to join the two strips together. I'll do the same thing for the other strips and then I'll be able to pin and begin sewing. You can see I have my border pinned on to the side of my quilt and I'm ready to stitch. A quarter inch seam all the way down the side to attach the border. I'll do the same on the other side and then I will trim both of them, the top and the bottom part of the border, and then I will attach the top and bottom strips across the entire quilt, top and bottom. One more quick note about the borders. As you can see, I've stitched one border onto the side of the quilt. I wanted to let you know that you should press your seam toward the border. The reason for that, even though it's a light border, I want to press it away from all of these seams here. It'll just be way too much bulk. So we're going to press this seam away from the quilt toward the border. And there you have it. Behind me is the Jelly Roll Raised Quilt with a chevron twist. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Now please stay tuned for information on how to enter my giveaway. In honor of reaching my 500 subscribers milestone, I am going to offer a free giveaway. I will be giving away five free electronic download or PDF patterns of this quilt to anyone who is a subscriber to my channel and leaves me a comment telling me their favorite thing about quilting. So to enter, just go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already, then leave me a comment in the comment section of this video. This giveaway is open to anyone in the entire world. It, it is an electronic download, a PDF of the pattern for this quilt behind me. Best of luck to you when you enter and thank you so much for watching. If you like this video again, please do subscribe and enter my giveaway. Tell a friend and head on over to my blog at decondesigns.com. There you'll find a free table runner pattern and more patterns for sale to come on my shop. Thank you for watching.